everyone and welcome to Discovery Day at Dr. Jenner's house, um, or not at Dr. Jenner's house, Discovery Day at home, being brought to you from Dr. Jenner's house to you wherever you are. It's our free all-age family science festival and if you've been watching our sessions over the past, well, this weekend, you may well have heard Dr. Kate Harvey talking about immunology. I, I like to think of it as, as Kate's epic introduction to the, the science of immunology. But now is the chance for you to ask Kate your questions. Um, so I've got a few questions for Kate, uh, but I really hope that people will join in. Um, you, if you're on YouTube, you can uh, click on the little uh, live chat box at the side and put in your questions, or you can tweet them at Dr. Jenner's house, hashtag Discover Jenna. You can send them to us on Facebook. You can email info at edwardjenner.co.uk. But you've only got half an hour to get your questions in for Kate. Um, Kate, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi Erin, um, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, you know I'm a chatterbox. So <laughs> I, I don't so, think we're going to have a trouble filling half this half an hour. An hour. <laughs> perhaps then, um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about yourself and about your, your research, please. So um, I studied cancer biology and immunology um, at the University of Bristol um, because I'd always been interested in science and maybe this is or isn't relevant but my my dad by trade is a microbiologist and my mum by trade is a pharmacologist and of all of my siblings I was the only one where they kind of thought oh, she might be a bit more sciencey. I'm not saying I was pushed into it. I absolutely wasn't. Um, and I'd always been interested with not, not so much actually as a younger age, the immune system, but genetics, which I then have fallen out of love with. So sorry about that. Um, but then when I started to kind of get into the the kind of depths of how the immune system actually works, I was just absolutely fascinated. And from a very young person, I'd always learned about vaccination and immunization, and those kind of things, because I knew that I hadn't had um, the MMR, which a lot of my, you know, people of my same age had had at the time it was three vaccinations, I hadn't had them. And it was because I'd had mumps when I was really small, when I was like 13 months old. And it was a, ah, why, why didn't I have that then? And it's because your immune system becomes primed when you come into contact with something that's foreign or non-self and Essentially, that's what a vaccination does, but it, it does that to prime your immune system, but it ensures that you don't become unwell. And so the fact that I'd had mumps, I'd become unwell, but my immune system was then primed. And because I'd survived, thankfully, um, it meant that I didn't then need the vaccination. And I was really, you know, not so much confused, but in, just interested in that kind of thing. Was I there a moment know. where you thought, I definitely want to be an immunologist? <laughs> Am I meant to pick up Jenna's house right now? That, that's, but... what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm hoping you're going to do. I know but there's yes. a story coming. But yes, um, so I had previously thought that my my life laid in with regards to the mathematical <laughs> area of um i don't know whatever it is that kind of research so um, in the past that you've forgotten yeah, all about yeah, it yeah, yeah. um and then i did recognize that actually my passion was i think i realized that it didn't matter if I earned any money or not. <laughs> I had to do something that I enjoyed. <laughs> um, so, um, definitely, I would say definitely that the the trip to to Edward Jenner's house in two thousand and four was absolutely fantastic. It 
it really made me think yes definitely there's something here and already that's you can learn things and you can hear about things but when you're actually there you think to yourself actually yes this is this is important like this is not that you didn't think it was important but this is more important than than you thought it was and i think for me and on one of the slides in my <laughs> horrendously long <laughs> um, powerpoints that i've given for this i think seeing the the temple of vaccinia was probably the thing that made me think yes this is where my interest and this is where my love really really lies because it was a case of oh even back then he recognized that not everyone is necessarily open to you know or or there's not an availability necessarily for let's say you know vaccinations or general you know antibiotics healthcare whatever edward jenner literally built a hut in his garden and said those of you who can't afford it drop by here out of hours i'll vaccinate you free and i think that was kind of where i thought yeah but there's there's a lot of good in in that kind of thing and and not just immunological things but generally healthcare things and it's, it's I, just, I kind of feel as though edward jenner actually <laughs> was the founder of the nhs if i'm honest so we, we talk about you being a, an immunologist but actually a lot of your research work now is is on something wildly different can can you tell us a little bit about how you you made that shift so i did my undergraduate degree in cancer biology and immunology so it was a 50 50 split even back then when i graduated it's well over 10 it's nearly 15 years ago now when i graduated uh our learning of um the immune system and also especially how cancer works is very different. My PhD ended up being in um, cardiovascular <laughs> research and looking at how we can prevent excessive damage from taking place. Um, if someone's had a heart attack essentially and people think it's very very different but actually i don't think it is because you're still looking at the same fundamental cell death pathways which actually th there's two main cell death pathways so there's necrosis which is like when you cut yourself you, you've damaged those cells irreparably, it dies, that causes an inflammatory immune response. But there's also apoptosis, which is a mechanism by which cells actually naturally die. We have natural cell turnover for the majority of our cells. Um, and so it was a case of trying to prevent or augment, I suppose, that ap apoptotic cell signaling pathway. And that's actually very similar with regards to cardiovascular or respiratory illnesses as it is with, with cancer and those kind of things. There's so much crossover and that's that's something that, that I think, you know, I've, I've, I've done a few of these conversations now and everyone's very keen to stress that actually we talk a lot about science being in its own little individual disciplines but actually everything is is connected obviously um, uh -huh. and that's something that perhaps we yeah it seems so obvious when you say it but actually um it, i don't it, think perhaps, it does seem that obvious when i say it <laughs> but yes. well perhaps not in terms of cell signaling pathways but is there is there anything that that you really love about the immune system 
if you were to say one particular thing. I love antigen presentation. I love the fact that it's that pathway between our innate immune system and our adaptive immune system because people often differentiate with regards to um you're going to think i'm going bonkers here but it's okay um an insect and a mammal and they think of it because there's the backbone or absence of a backbone and the backbone but actually you can also differentiate on an immunological basis that actually invertebrates yes they don't have that that solid kind of background backbone blah, 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 backbone <laughs> that we have um, but also they only have an innate immune system whereas mammals or any higher beings including fish and things like that they also have an adaptive immune system. So I feel as though the main difference between a vertebrate and an invertebrate is the absence or presence of an adaptive immune system. And I think that actually the way that our adaptive immune system works is clever, but also a bit difficult if that makes sense because it can cause a lot of problems but um, the innate immune system of any organism is there it's fully equipped whilst developing and once once you're out into the open world and most of the time it does the trick it, it comes across as being so complex but also how how do you even start getting your head around it? We we've not even we've not even skimmed the surface of of the immune system at all. Um, I think that we are getting close to understanding sufficiently with regards to how how we're trying to augment the immune system to produce vaccines and things like that. But um, the, the main problem is, in my mind, and maybe I'm being stupid, but genetically, Owen, granted you're an XY, I assume, and I'm an XX, I assume, not been tested. All of our other chromosomes are kind of the same, but they're different. And that's why you look different from my brother and I look different from your sister, if you have one, sorry if you don't. <laughs> and that's not just the case with regards to how we look physically. It also matters with regards to everything inside and our immune systems and how we make up, you know, everything else, if that makes sense. We're all different. And that's where the problem lies because if, for example, both you and I were infected with the flu, Both of our immune systems would recognise it as non-self, as foreign, and our immune systems would work against it. But the way our immune systems are worked up means that the way that the macrophages and the dendritic cells and all of that, dare I say, eat them up and present them to the rest of our immune system, to the adaptive immune system, it wouldn't necessarily be the same bits, if that makes sense. And it wouldn't necessarily be the same thing. And it wouldn't necessarily provoke the same response. 
and that's dare I say the problem I could talk to you about immunology all all day I'm, I'm sure and, and uh, obviously there is so much to discuss and it's fantastic you're you're so enthusiastic about it as well and we we've we've just had a couple of questions come in i'm conscious of of we're very much running out of time we've had a couple of questions come in um one of them is is why are we advised to take vitamin d vi- no, sorry i'll say that again vitamin d daily every winter so it boosts your immune system your immune system is boosted by sunlight it helps with regards to um, the non-UV um, elements that come from the atmosphere um, into your body that you need, and it promotes cell growth and cell proliferation, but in a healthy way. Um, we, we have pretty much run out of time. Um, so I don't know whether you'll be able to answer this in about two minutes, but let, let's try. It's come from uh, Tom Dent on YouTube. Is it possible to create a vaccine against an allergic response? So say that those with an allergy to peanuts can enjoy them with the help of a vaccination. So people who have allergic responses, the reason they have the allergic response is normally because they have... So if you looked at what I was talking about with regards to T-cells, there's... T helper cells and T cytotoxic cells, which are the CD8 cells. The T helper cells, actually, there's two main subsets, Th1 and Th2. And when when we think about um, allergic reactions, it depends, and it is that we're trying to find, but it looks like there's a genetic thing as to how you respond to things like cat litter or, or cat fur and dust and those kind of things. And it goes back to, to what I was saying about the, the nut allergy, um, that actually um, most, most people, when they come into contact with, obviously it's non-self, but it's not considered to be bad, it, gives a TH1 response and it's okay. For other people, and we're still trying to understand why there's that genetic difference, it gives a TH2 response, which is as if it was, as I said earlier, like a worm or something awful. And it gives a very, very large um, inflammatory response. So for some people, what they've started doing is that for individuals who um, are reacting to essentially allergens, which shouldn't be harmful, but their immune system are, is they're giving subcutaneous bits of the allergen to them because that promotes an uh, basically um, a T helper one response. So I'm going to go too far right now, but <laughs> you're like, don't say, okay, don't say. <laughs> but um, an interferon gamma response, which can actually then outcompete the response from the other cells, and then actually limit the thing, uh, but the, the overriding inflammatory response. You can essentially give um, a herb a kind of vaccine. You can also um, provide people, and this has become quite quite a common treatment, um, an anti-IgE um, treatment, which essentially is a treatment which will mop up the extra antibodies that are causing the allergic reaction. This is my hands. These are my hands. Mopping it up and try to limit it. Obviously, once your immune system does or has produced certain adaptive adaptive cells, you can't stop them, but there's ways definitely to augment them. We've we've pretty much run out of time now, Kate, I'm afraid. That's so, fine. Just- um-
coming up at two o'clock, we've got a five minute break now. At two o'clock, we've got Hannah Ayub doing a illustration workshop. So you can register for that on Zoom, but it's also going to be streamed live on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, look on our website for the, the Zoom link. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. But once again, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you very much to Dr. Kate Harvey. Thank you. Thank you.